Over the last few years, virtual reality has gone from futuristic experimental technology to one that has become practical for many people to use today. In this video, we'll show you how to get started with the current generation of inexpensive VR headsets that offer high-quality immersive experiences. The first decision to make is whether you want a tethered headset or a standalone headset. Tethered headsets, like the HTC Vibe, HP Reverb, or Valve Index, offer the highest quality and range of applications, but need to be connected to a powerful PC in order to work. A standalone headset, like the Oculus Quest, is simpler to set up, but will offer lower resolution and less computing power. Standalone headsets will often require that you get software from app stores specific to that company or product. Before you buy a headset, you should consider a few questions. What do I want to do in virtual reality? Is there specific software I know I want to run? How portable does the headset need to be? Will I need to move it around? Or is there a single workstation I'll use it from? Will the headset only have one primary user? Or will many people share it? Do I have a computer that's capable of providing a good VR experience? Answering these questions will help you figure out what kind of headset to buy. For example, if you know there is a specific VR application you will use most frequently, make sure you get a headset that works well with it. While many headsets are compatible with common software, there are sometimes wrinkles that will make one combination of software and headset easier to configure than others. Similarly, if you know that your computer is not very powerful, or that you need a highly portable setup, you may be willing to sacrifice the quality of the experience in return for a standalone headset that doesn't need to be connected to a computer. If you are planning on running a headset that uses the Windows Mixed Reality software, like the HP Reverb, you'll need a Windows computer. Type Mixed Reality Portal into the search bar, usually found in the bottom left corner of the screen. In the Mixed Reality Portal, press the Get Started button to read and agree to the terms of service. The app will tell you if your computer is VR ready and, if not, what needs to be changed. For all tethered headsets, including those running on Windows Mixed Reality, you can test how your computer would run VR using the Steam VR Performance Test. Steam is a platform commonly used to distribute virtual reality software. You can download Steam online. A quick online search will point you to steampowered.com. Once Steam is downloaded and installed, run it. You'll need to either create an account or log in if you already have one. Once you're logged in, go to the Library tab and in the top left, right above the search bar, click the drop down and select Tools. Find Steam VR in the list and download and install it through Steam. Then, use the same procedure to install the Steam VR Performance Test. After everything is downloaded and installed, run the Steam VR Performance Test. A few minutes later, it will tell you how well your computer is suited for VR. VR hardware typically includes the headset itself and a set of controllers. Some headsets also come with extra components used to track a user's position in space. No matter which headset you're using, your controllers need to have power to work, so this is a good time to make sure that they either have working batteries, or have been charged using the included cables. There are two main ways a virtual reality headset tracks your position in space. If your headset came with some small boxes, it uses lighthouse tracking. With lighthouse tracking, you'll need to set up the two lighthouses first. The two lighthouses are positioned on opposite corners of a rectangular space where you want to be able to use your headset. You'll want to plan out their positions before plugging them in because at least one of them will always need a clear line of sight to your headset while you're using it. It's a good idea to keep them as high as possible by putting them on a bookshelf or using the included wall mounts. The instructions that come with them may have other restrictions to keep in mind such as how far apart you want to put them, and whether they only need to be powered, or if they should also be connected to each other or the computer with wires. If your headset did not come with lighthouses, then it probably uses a positioning method called inside-out tracking. With inside-out tracking, cameras built into your headset calculate your location in space as you move around, so lighthouses are not necessary. Whether your headset uses inside-out tracking or lighthouses, you'll want to define an area of floor that is free from obstacles, so you can use your headset without bumping into anything. You'll define the boundaries of this space during software setup later. 
You might also want to put down some markers in the real world now. A bit of tape on the floor will remind you of the area you want to keep clear and alert anyone else in the room of the space a user in the headset may need to use. At this point, you are ready to connect your headset to your computer. The exact cables and boxes you may need vary from headset to headset. Typically, you'll need some combination of a display port or HDMI cable and one or more USB cables. Some headsets will plug directly into the back of your computer, while others may require a powered breakout box between the headset and the computer. Check the instructions that came with your headset for details. While you may have received USB cables with your controllers, those cables are only meant for charging. Controllers for virtual reality headsets typically pair with your computer using Bluetooth. Button and stick layouts on controllers vary between manufacturers, but a typical controller might have a set of face buttons on top, a trackpad or thumbstick, more buttons along the side of the handle, and a trigger beneath your index finger. If your headset uses inside-out tracking, it will probably be more accurate when the controllers are in front of you, where the headset's cameras can see them clearly. The software you need to drive your headset varies depending on the manufacturer and model. For some headsets, like the Viveline and the Index, Steam VR manages the connection to your headset. If you have a Vive headset, you'll need to first download and install Viveport and sign in before progressing. If your headset is connected, it'll start installing the correct drivers. Then start up Steam VR on your computer. A small pop-up should appear on your screen showing connection to your headset. Your controller should automatically pair to your headset when first turned on. If the Steam VR pop-up doesn't show both controllers, manually add them through Steam VR by going to the menu, clicking on Devices, Pair Controller, and following the instructions on your computer screen. Steam VR will then guide you through room setup and a small tutorial. For other headsets, like the HP Reverb, the Windows Mixed Reality Portal is used instead of Steam VR. For headsets like these, you should only have to connect your headset and start the Mixed Reality Portal. The portal will guide you through the remaining setup, including connecting the controllers. If you are using an Oculus tethered headset, like the Rift S or Quest Link, you'll need to start the Oculus app. This app will guide you through connecting the controllers and configuring your room. The most common platform used to distribute virtual reality software is Steam. If you have a Vive, Index, or other headset that depends on Steam VR, you can download and run Steam applications directly. Other applications can also run software distributed on Steam, though it will take an extra few steps. If you're using a Windows Mixed Reality headset like the Reverb, open Steam, go to the Steam Store, and download Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR. If you are using an Oculus, the Oculus app can be configured to allow Steam software by checking off the setting to allow apps from unknown sources. Once you have access to Steam VR on your headset, you can download and use VR apps from the regular Steam store on your computer. It has a lot of interesting experiences, both paid and free. Steam VR will also let you run any apps built on OpenVR, which you can sometimes find online. Beyond Steam, there are some other options for finding software depending on your headset. If you have a Vive, you can get Viveport Infinity, a paid subscription service that works through Viveport and gives free access to a lot of apps that otherwise have to be purchased individually. If you have an Oculus, you can access Facebook Store for VR apps. These can be bought from in headset or the Oculus app. If you're using a Windows Mixed Reality headset, you can use the Microsoft Store's VR apps. On your computer, this store can be found from the Windows search menu, brought up by pressing Windows key plus S and looking for the Microsoft Store. Apps can also be added in headset. This is all you need to do to get started with virtual reality. Set up your headset, find some open space to move around in, and download immersive software to experience. From here, you can play, learn, and create on your own as you explore the new possibilities opened up by VR.